All champions I've talked about before this one have been ones where I've played the pre-rework champion more, or even preferred them in some cases. But this is one where I, and likely many others, can say they definitely prefer the champion post-rework. Warwick is one of the most straightforward looking reworks for sure, with how much the reworked champion seems to mirror the old version. But beyond surface level analysis, Riot snuck in a lot of complexity and cool mechanics into Warwick's kit while still keeping him simple to learn and play at his skill floor. However, to appreciate the new, we have to look at the old, so let's jump back to Warwick before the rework. Warwick's old passive was Eternal First. It caused his basic attacks to deal bonus magic damage, healing him for the same amount. This could stack up to 3 times per target, lasting 4 seconds, for increased damage and healing over longer fights, and also counted as a non-hit effect. Warwick's Q was Hungering Strike, dealing magic damage on a point and click, and healing for 80% of the damage dealt. It scaled with 100% AP, and either did a flat amount of damage, or did 8-16% to of the target's maximum health based on ability level. Which one the ability did was determined by which one would deal more damage. Warwick's ult W was Hunter's Call, which would, for 6 seconds, cause Warwick to gain bonus attack speed, between 40-80% to based on ability level, and give half of that bonus attack speed to his nearby allies. Warwick's old E was Blood Scent. It was a toggleable ability which when flipped on would give Warwick vision of all nearby enemy champions below 50% of their maximum health, also warning them of this ability. The range extended from 1500 to 4700 units depending on the ability's level. Warwick would also gain 20-40% to bonus movement speed when revealing enemies with Blood Scent, not limited to just moving towards them. Warwick's ultimate was Infinite Duress, which was a point and click ability that blinked Warwick to the target, channeling for 1.5 seconds. Warwick would suppress the target for 1.8 seconds, gain 30% lifesteal for the channel duration, and deal magic damage and apply on hit effects 5 times. It scaled with 40% bonus AD, and could be escaped through Quicksilver Sash. Old Warwick was evidently a lot simpler, and also therefore lacking some counterplay. He was a bruiser, on-hit, auto-attacker with an instant suppression only counterable by spell shields before it was cast, and only Quicksilver Sash after it was cast, and unlike someone like Malzahar, Warwick was often a tanky boy while doing this suppression. Being one of the released champions of League, Old Warwick's kit was as reliable as it was breakable. He had some of the best sustain in the game, both top and jungle, during his time before the rework, with excellent synergy with many of the on-hit and lifesteal items released over the seasons. In fact, he sometimes had a bit too much synergy with items, prompting their nerfs and possibly his own rework. In patch 4.20, pre-season 5, Riot introduced two new items. The first was Devourer, an item succeeding Season 4's Feral Flare that gained more on hit power for every large jungle monster you had slain, and the second was Skirmisher's Saber, the predecessor of today's Ember Knife, though both are better known as Challenging Smite. Back then, Challenging Smite still reduced incoming damage and dealt true damage to its smite target, but instead of damage over time as it is today, the true damage was dealt as an on-hit effect. Combining a near-uncounterable instant suppression that deals on-hit effects 5 times with a scaling magic damage on-hit and a true damage on-hit was absolutely insane, and likely the most broken Warwick has ever been in 12 years of League of Legends. Anyway, in the following patch 4.21, Devourer had its magic on-hit damage cut almost in half, and Challenging Smite had its on-hit true damage changed to be dealt over 3 seconds instead. Warwick's ultimate had its damage nerfed as well, stopping this tragedy from completely dominating Season 5. Warwick's rework not only fixed many issues with Warwick, but also added a lot of depth that I feel would go underappreciated by those who have never played as him, even if they all feel extremely similar. Warwick's new passive now has some small ratios added to it, 15% bonus AD and 10% AP, but still does magic damage on hit. Instead of stacking 3 times on targets, now Warwick gains bonuses depending on his health, 
When below 50% maximum health, and only when below 50% maximum health, Warwick heals for 100% of the post mitigation damage dealt by this passive, and this is increased to 250% while below 25% maximum health, meaning Warwick heals below half HP and heals even more below a quarter of his HP. Warwick's Q now has a high ratio of 120% total AD as well as 100% AP to deal magic damage on a point and click and additionally deal 6-10% of the target's maximum health, no longer one or the other. Warwick also heals between 30-90% of the post mitigation damage dealt based on ability level. And now, by holding Q, Warwick can attach to the opponents with his jaws, kind of swinging around them and dashing to their opposite side, meaning by holding Q instead of pressing it, Warwick can dash through his opponent. With that attach part, it means he also follows their dashes and blinks, including flash, causing any of their movement abilities to take Warwick with them. Warwick's new W is Blood Hunt, which combines his old W and E into one ability. From the old E, we see the blood scent nature of the ability, giving a kind of vision on enemies below 50% of their maximum health, as well as 35-55% to bonus movement speed when running towards them. And from the old W, we see a return of bonus attack speed, 70% to 110% based on ability level, once again on enemies below 50% maximum health. Additionally, these bonuses will be increased by 250% against enemies below 20% maximum health. Now what did I mean by a kind of vision? Unlike the old Warwick's Blood Scent, new Warwick's Blood Hunt shows a blood trail between Warwick and the affected enemy without actually giving vision of them. Warwick can only decipher where they are from where the blood trail ends. Only Warwick can see it, but he can see it through Fog of War and all forms of stealth. Additionally, Warwick's W has an active ability as well, with a very long cooldown which allows him to track the blood scent of the nearest enemy champion within 4000 units, once again including stealthed enemies. There's a lot I want to talk about with this ability in particular, so we'll come back to it. Warwick's reworked E is a new ability to Warwick that solved one of his issues. Outside of alts, Old Warwick had basically no gank power pre-6 despite being a jungler. This was because he didn't have the best gap closers and more importantly he had no forms of CC whatsoever besides the kinda broken one on his ultimate. The new Warwick's E has two components, an initial cast and a second cast after 2.5 seconds or when recast manually. The initial cast grants Warwick 35-55% to damage reduction for the duration. The recast, which can be done manually after at least one second, ends the damage reduction effect and causes all enemies around him to flee from Warwick for one second while also slowing them for 90%. Warwick's new ultimate is still named Infinite Duress, but the ability has a few notable changes. First, the ability is now a skill shot. Warwick leaps in a target direction and the range is based on 250% of Warwick's movement speed, meaning he can extend its reach with movement from Blood Hunt, items, runes, and buffs. During the leap, he is unstoppable. When he collides with an enemy champion, they are suppressed for 1.5 seconds, revealing them and dealing magic damage every 0.25 seconds. The total damage scales with 167% bonus AD, with a base damage of 175 to 525 based on ability level. During the ability, Warwick is healed for 100% of post mitigation damage he deals to the target, and also applies on hit and on attack effect three times, including lifesteal at 100% effectiveness. Additionally, if Warwick's E was active when the ult was cast, it would immediately recast, but without ending the damage reduction prematurely. Even though the damage ticks every 0.25 seconds, the hard cap on the on hit effect at 3 is much less generous and broken than the old 5 pre rework Warwick could do, meaning Warwick very rarely would break even the most broken on hit items that would come after his rework, nowhere near to the extent other auto attackers like Master Yi could. Despite these nerfs, Warwick's playstyle was preserved so well with the rework. On his effects and AD, and even AP to an extent, are all still effective on him, just not as crazily focused on his ultimate as they used to be. Instead, with his high attack speed bonus and applying on hits on Q, on hit synergy was more evenly spread through Warwick's kit, making him a far more satisfying to play brawler and drain tank. As I alluded to, the rework raised the skill ceiling in many ways with lots of niche tricks. For example, Warwick's new W can be used to find the nearest enemy, meaning you can find out, for example, if an enemy is hiding in a nearby bush. 
or if an enemy is currently on the Rift Herald or Dragon, or where Akali is pathing in her Stealth Shroud. A quick press of the active while split pushing can also sweep a 4000 unit radius to check if enemy enemy champions are nearby at all. It doesn't show blood trails to Warwick's allies though, and so pinging what you can smell can be a good way to convey information, especially to pre-mates who have any idea what you're on about and not just randomly pinging in a deranged craze. Moving on, Warwick's E is often used as a hard CC as it's a directional 1 second fear, however, recasting the ability removes the damage reduction. In combination with Warwick's Q and passive healing, the latter becoming more effective at 25% or lower max HP, Warwick's damage reduction can make him so deceptively tanky by essentially raising your effective HP for up to 2.5 seconds, and therefore raising the value of the HP you're healing back with passive and Q, giving a lot less obvious applications for Warwick's abilities that make him such a fun drain tank. To go even further, Warwick's ultimate gaining 100% lifesteal effectiveness and 100% healing for the duration in exchange for becoming a skill shot adds even more to his kit as a drain tank, making it more than just a simple suppression ability to lock down an enemy, though of course, it retains that utility. Warwick's rework is absolutely my favourite in the game, and became my favourite drain tank in the game once I picked him up somewhere in Season 9. Memories of pre-rework Warwick are often hilarious or strangely uninteractive, both playing as and against. This rework introduced so much more depth to Warwick, as well as giving him much more counterplay on all fronts rather than just by QSS, while making it all the more rewarding to get into position to deal some damage and ult some carries. But those are my thoughts. I'm looking forward to hearing what you think of Warwick. How do you feel about this rework? Did you play the old Warwick at all? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one, which is... what's that? That's not a rework, that's a completely different champion. Oh. Alright. Oh,